To the New Jersey companies here today, thank you for coming. I'm proud our state is at the forefront of innovation. But even in New Jersey, where the pharmaceutical industry and related fields like medical research employ hundreds of thousands of people, the overwhelming majority of the more than 9 million New Jerseyans believe drug prices are too high. And so I think we all uh, have to be responsive uh, to that challenge collectively. Uh, Americans everywhere reject the notion that reducing prescription drug costs means reducing innovation. They're uh, uniting around this issue. And it isn't a Democratic or Republican priority. It's bipartisan. Maybe it's for political reasons, but President Trump is talking more and more about executive action. A Republican chairman of the Finance Committee, Senator Grassley, has convened this hearing today, the second of two on prescription drugs. And reducing prescription drug prices has become a focal point of virtually every Democratic presidential campaign. So consider it a friendly warning from someone who believes in the hope that you provide patients in the need of new cures and treatments. It's time to be proactive. Uh, because if you do not make a meaningful action to reduce prescription drug prices, policymakers are inevitably going to do it for you. Uh, so I just hope you'll take that to heart. Let me ask you, uh, many corporations, not just pharmaceutical ones, received a huge windfall uh, from the uh, Trump tax bill. Your company spent well over $40 billion buying back your own stock in the past year. Going down the row, uh, can you just give me the ballpark number? Did any of you use your tax breaks to lower the costs of any of your prescription drugs? We did not use our tax break to lower the cost of prescription drugs. We used it for other um, aspects of trying to stimulate the economy and invest further in the United States. No, you, you, you didn't use lower the cost, yeah. The uh, <clears throat> Senator, the tax break uh, for us, being based in the UK, had a very marginal impact on our profitability. So I think the question is... The no. question is, it's a simple yes or no. The, the well, is, for whatever you use your tax breaks, whatever the tax break was, yeah. did you use it to, any part of it to lower uh, the cost of prescription drugs? Well, the cost of our prescription drugs on a net basis has been declining uh, for, the num for many years now. Uh, Senator Wyden uh, took... Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Soria. It's a simple question. Did you use any part of the tax break that you got to lowering the cost of your prescription drugs? In a roundabout way, yes, we did, because uh, the minimal tax benefit we got helped us sustain our profitability at the same time as our prices mm -hmm. were declining. Dr. Caffey, uh, we didn't. Hello, Senator. It provided us the opportunity to invest an incremental $30 billion in R&D and capital investments in the U.S. over the next four years. We think that that's the best way for us to be able to deliver for patients. Mr. Fraser. Senator, our effective tax rate went up from 19.1 to 19.8. We did use this uh, tax break to do many things among them, reduce our prices. Prices in 2018 for the first time since I remember went down in Pfizer. As a French company headquarters in Paris, we didn't get much from the tax break. Um, on, the GAT, on the GAT basis, we uh, lower our global tax rate by 1.5 percent. All right. Now, in November of 2017, FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb called on pharmaceutical companies to, quote, end the shenanigans when it comes to the ability of potential competitors to purchase branded doses at full market price. He stated, and I quote, I see this clearly, for example, in steps branded companies sometimes take to make it hard, all, altogether impossible, for generic firms to get access to the doses of the branded companies needed in order to compete uh, bioequivalent studies that the FDA requires for a generic approval. Uh, I've co-sponsored legislation called CREATES that ends the gamesmanship by certain companies where they prevent generic manufacturers from assessing the necessary samples they need to develop generics. Last year, the FDA published its first list of medicines that generic companies have had trouble accessing. That list includes more than 170 complaints covering 50 medicines. So can you go down the line and tell me yes or no, does your company in any way restrict access to or block the purchase of samples at full market price? No, we do not. No, we do not. We do not. We support the current, the current version of the CREATES Act. No, we do not. No, we do not. No, we do not, and we support CREATES. No, we do not, and we support CREATES, too. Right. 
Uh, I have other questions. I'm going to submit them for the record. Sen Thank you, Mr. Senator. Chairman.